think I'd like to make uh, tomatoes in a grow bag for you. So first of all, we'll have to make the grow bag. If you go to my website, you'll find a print of this, uh, somewhere that you can print this, this grow bag out from. Now, remember that um, it is a copyright item, so you are welcome to use it for yourself, but you aren't um, really allowed to sell it. You can design your own, obviously, so that shouldn't be a problem if you're if you're a professional or semi-professional. Right, so the first thing that I want to do to prevent me having to put too much liquid Fimo on is to cut this out. But I want to leave a little bit of white on the bottom for a tab. So I cut it right on the yellow. There. And leave as much as you think you're going to need for a tab on the bottom. Shouldn't be too much. Like that. Then, to turn it into a plastic grow bag, I use liquid female. I hardly ever use the, the proper nozzle. I almost always took it out. Right. So there's a fiesta going on in the village today. So if you hear a lot of noise and horses and uh, bells, church bells, etc., that's because the fiesta's passing by. It's the famous, that's famous to us. <laughs> it's not very famous. It's the Romaria de las Ventas. It's fantastic. It's a lovely fiesta, but today I haven't really got time to do it. Because I'm busy working on my gardens book. But while I'm doing this for the gardens book, I might as well show you how I'm doing it. So I'm covering this in liquid Fimo very thinly. And that is going in the oven. So here I've got a set of finished ones and they have a nice sort of plasticky feel. It's a little bit curly but that shouldn't matter it'll be glued on. Right, so that's our little glow, glow bag. I'm just folding it along those seams to give it a bit of a shape so I can see what size it is. Generally, it starts to curve over where the colour finishes. So they're quite long and thin. Because they're made to have three plants. Right, something else I've got to remember to do. And I need a single-sided blade for that. So obviously this isn't a... a task for children. If you've got children making these, please do this task yourself. Be very careful with single-sided blades. So all I do with this is just put a X-shaped cut on these three little sections. Those are the parts for the plants to be put in. Now, some gardeners cut those sections out completely. But my husband, who doesn't like weeding, 
leaves them in and just makes a cut when he's planting his grow bags. So those little sections are open there now. Right, so the next thing I need is a little bit of oasis, which you can get at most uh, flower shops. And you want the one that's not for wet. And I'm just making a sort of guess. I think that that's about two grow bags deep. And then it's not very deep, so. Just cutting a thin piece. It really is less than you think. Really have cleaned this first. So that's the width you want, and maybe make that a little bit thin. And the length you want is approximately the length of that coloured part. Not too long. Right. So now you've got your oasis, we need to put some soil on it because obviously the, um, the plants are going to want to sit in soil. So I have some soil substitute here and some glue, <coughs> some wood glue. Don't need very much of that. Just cheap wood glue I'm using here. Let's place that on there. The liner. I've already put some glue underneath there to stick that on. And then just a little bit of of soil substitute on there. Tip it right back off. That's all you need. Right now we need to glue the tab here with the same glue. And while you're at it, put a little bit of glue on the sides. So just pull the two pieces together and then close the central bit. As you can see, so it was visible in there. So now I need some clips. And I've put them somewhere, you can't see where, there they are. So I was going to use these big fat clips here to clip this together. But I found something that I like a little bit better. I need to push that in a little bit because it's too far this way. Unfortunately, with it being oasis, it dips a bit when I try and push it. That's better. So I found these little clips in a um, Asian supermarket and they should be nicely. They'll give it a little bit of a ripple effect, I think.
So here I've got the leaves that have come out of the mould and you might notice that some of them have little bits hanging around and that's where the spatula scrapes the material onto the mould and not off again and it would take far too long to try and clean it off before you bake it. So they're now baked, they're nice and bendy but they've got these little bits that need removing and here are the flower, uh, the sorry, the, the fruits and I've also made some flowers here with some tiny immature fruits on. Right, so I'll take, and I'll leave that leaf on there. That's a handmade leaf rather than one that's been made in the mould. Right, so if I clear those out of the way, I can show you the clean up process for these. You just take a pair of nail scissors and trim out the little bits of excess material and they come off really easily. Um, one thing that I do have to say is when you first use your mould, the material does crumble. So for the first one or even two mouldings, basically you just have to throw it away. So use those as a practice session because they uh, the material reacts with the mould material and it crumbles a little bit. But that effect stops after the first or second time. I do wash them with um, hot water and washing up liquid as well to minimise that effect as well. So I managed to keep it down to about one, one lot that don't really work. And there doesn't seem to be any way around it, even the washing up liquid on its own doesn't doesn't solve that problem. Um, only baking polymer clay in the mould solves the problem of how the mould reacts with the polymer clay. So I think what it is, is it's the oils coming out of the, uh, the minute mould into the clay and uh, causing a slight reaction that makes the uh, the clay crumbly. This may be a crumbly one that I've got because I've got it out of a different bag, but I wanted some lighter colours. So just that little bit in the middle and then that other light one next to it and just twist the wires. Don't worry about um, tidying up how they look at the moment. When you do that, they'll stick higher up than the other. Then bring in another leaf and continue to twist. And you might want to make a second branch. So then you would maybe bring one of those pieces up <coughs> to help you twist in a second leaf. That's a good place to hang a fruit from. So these haven't been tidied up, so I'm just going to show you how, how I'm putting them in anyway. So it's up to you how mature your plant is and what variety it is. Some, some um, tomato plants can reach six or nine feet high, quite, quite tall plants, and some are just dwarfing and they'll only come to about two feet high. So that's your decision. I've already made one here, twisted one together here, and um, it just remains for me to paint some goo on it to disguise the twists in the stalk in the stem. So I've got some of the nice bright green. I'm just painting that on to help disguise those those joins so that it doesn't look wired. So it looks more like a a real branch. It's 
also helps to stick the fruits on when you come to put those on. Any bits that look particularly blobby, put a little more of the of the goo on. When I was about 15, I used to work in a tomato growers. So when I'm working with these, I can almost smell the, the smell of the tomato stems, which is a very strong smell. There, so I'm quite happy with that. And then I'll bring some of these fruits. And if you remember, I did a little turnover on the end and that helps you to hook them on. There's a pair of fruits. Don't put too many on, less is more really. So I'll put two lots of fruit on. I'll put that a bit higher up. If I can get it off. So um, I'm just going to put some little flowers on as well. So I'll add a little bit more of the goo. Of course, putting the goo on means you are going to have to bake it again, but it does make everything a lot more solid. So I've just popped that little flower, flower bract in there. It's not got a hook on it, so it may fall off. Let's see if I've got another one. Yeah. So we'll see if these stay on because it just depends how strongly the goo grabs onto it. So I'm going to bake that and because I want it to bake in a, in a way that doesn't flatten, <coughs> I either have to hang it or place it carefully so that, there are, so that there isn't a sort of squashing effect of gravity on it. So I'm using this little thing and putting the leaves over the edge. The other way you can do it is hang it upside down, but that should bake quite nicely on there. I can see that little flower wants to fall off though. I'll see if that stays there. Right, so I'll bake it and then we'll put it in the grow bag. Um, and simply to plant in the grow bag, you just snip the bottom and because it's uh, oasis that will plant firmly into there and you should have no problems if you've got any problems add some glue, uh, glue and some extra uh, scenic material for the for the soil uh, by the way i didn't mention earlier that the soil substitute is made from coconut fiber which you can get in most um, garden shops. <laughs> 